Well, joining me live now is the independent senator, Jackie Lambie. Senator, good to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning. I uh, just want to ask you about Christian Porter, first of all. What was your key takeout from his response to the accusations yesterday? Um, look, it was a little bit concerning, I think. I think um, I would have just kept it um, with him. I think uh, I wouldn't have stayed up there as long as what he did, that's for sure. I think for me what's more worrying than anything is when you've got an Attorney-General and when you've got a Defence Minister uh, and they're now having to take some leave um, because they're not handling things very well, I have to ask... If their conscience is clear, why are they not handling this very well? Really, if they've got a clear enough conscience, um, I would think that you'd just be able to get on with your day. So that that's worrying me more than anything. So I'm, not, I'm really not sure what else to say, but I would imagine that in the weeks to come, there'll be more people come forward and there'll be more allegations at others as well. OK, uh, I will ask you about Linda Reynolds separately uh, just in a moment, but, but with respect to Christian Porter, should he remain as Attorney-General? Um, look, I don't think um, he's going to be able to, uh, to be brutally honest with you, um, but that will be up to Christian Porter, I suppose. Um, you know, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see how this plays out over the next uh, month or so. Yeah. But um, I'm just not sure whether it's viable for him anymore to be in that position. Yeah, OK. Well, can you just elaborate on why you think he shouldn't remain? Uh, well, I guess if his conscience is clear, he can, you know, and he's happy to remain, that's fine. Um, you know, they, they are pretty heavy allegations that are going on. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, that lady uh, took her own life um, and I'm just not sure where that's going to go from here on in. I would like to see uh, at least a, a coronial inquest conducted because uh, she did take her own life. Um, apparently she uh, kept a lot of material and I think that material should be examined one way or another. Do, do you believe, though, I mean, he should be entitled to the presumption of innocence and, after all, the police in New South Wales, at least, have closed the case? Are you satisfied? that that's enough or do you believe that there should be more that there should be an independent inquiry as well well that's what I mean that's why we have um, coroners out there to look at this sort of stuff when people take their own lives so uh, we certainly do it with suicides that come out of the military uh, and veterans and we can actually gather quite a lot of evidence um, from that uh, but once again this will be up to the Attorney General on whether or not um, having that uh, very high profile job as the attorney on whether he believes that um, you know that he can actually keep that job so that will be up to his call. Yeah, I mean, the Attorney-General, and, and uh, Zali Stegall has made this point this morning as well, the Attorney-General has to be someone that the public has the utmost faith in. Is that something that you would agree with? Oh, absolutely. You know, he's got one of the um, highest jobs in, in the country. Um, you know, so I think that if people have lost faith in him and don't trust him anymore, then absolutely he'll need to step down. So I guess we'll just see how this plays out over the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't think his job's sustainable, to be honest with you. Well, he believes if he's forced out and forced to step aside, and he spoke about this yet yesterday, Senator, that it could destroy the rule of law in the country. In that respect, do you agree with him? Uh, look, whether he's forced out, I, I would think that uh, if, if the public has lost confidence in him, then the right thing would be to step down. It's as simple as that. Does Whether it... it's a rule of law or whatever, it's the public perception out there of the Attorney General. And if that public perception stays where it is right now and doesn't move, then I don't think he's going to have any other choice. He will need to stand down. Yeah, essentially, and Matt Canavan has made these comments this week as well. They believe that so going forward, if that happens, then, then an accusation can be made to anybody from any time and then that could result in them losing their career moving forward. So it's an interesting test case here. Do you, do you accept what what uh, Christian had said yesterday and also Matt had said earlier in the week? Uh, well, I think Christian could have said a lot yesterday, a lot more than what um, he probably should have done. I would have kept it a lot, um, tried it a lot clean cut, and probably had it all on paper, what, exactly what I was going to say. Um, I don't think he helped himself yesterday. I think he talked for way too long, uh, personally. Um, but for me, if the, if the public confidence does not lift back up in the Attorney General, then he'll have no other choice. He'll have to resign. It is that simple. You just cannot have a, an attorney sitting there where the public has lost all confidence in him, uh, whether he's guilty or not. So I'm not really sure. But certainly this needs to go to a coronial inquest and it needs to be looked at and all this evidence that's sitting there needs to be examined. 
Do you, what sort of concerns, Senator, do you have with the government functioning at the moment? Because essentially you've got two ministers who are sidelined. Uh, yes, well, it's not functioning well at all. I think those ministers need to decide whether or not, um, you know, they step aside so the government can get on with doing the job that it's supposed to be doing and so it's not such a distraction. Uh, so I guess whether they're prepared to, um, to give up their jobs uh, and sit on the back bench or resign from Parliament in full uh, will be up to them. But right now it is a massive distraction for the government. Uh, we're coming out of COVID and there is a lot that needs to be done. And with this on your tail, uh, I can, I'm just not sure how the government is going to govern. Well, just on to the Defence Minister, Linda Reynolds, now overnight. A report has emerged and the Australians got all the details this morning uh, that Linda Reynolds referred to Brit Higgins as a lying cow. What do you make of those comments? Um, well, I hope she hasn't made those comments because I'll tell you she will be finished today. Uh, there's no doubt about that. So it will have to come out. She'll have to come out and she'll either have to defend herself or say whether or not she made those comments. And if she did, then she'll have to resign at the same time. Well, she issued a statement and she didn't deny that she made those comments, but she uh, says that she, she was kind of referring to a news report rather than the accusations themselves. OK, well, that's bad enough. She's gone this morning. She needs to resign immediately. Uh, you know, there's just no need for this. Um, and for her to be blamed, what is she sitting in denial, is she? Seriously. Yeah, I think Reynolds is gone. So if I was her, she's she's not coming out and denying that. Now she's trying to uh, smooth it over and throw it somewhere else. Then I think she's finished. Her career's done. All right. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, and we've spoken about this already, do, would you be making a pitch for Peter Dutton to, to return as, or not return, but to, to head towards Defence Minister? I really can't see anybody else that um, has that sort of capability, to be honest with you. Maybe someone else can make a call, but nobody else seems to be putting somebody else's name up there. So, and I think Peter Dutton, there was a lot of clean-up that needs to be done in defence, and that needs somebody that's got a spine. And right now, I think that we've all seen Peter Dutton with the way uh, he's handled his own portfolio and home affairs over the years. Um, he's a tough guy. Uh, he'll stand his ground and he'll get the job done. There's no doubt about that. So I just don't see anybody else that can fill those shoes except for Peter Dalton. All right, Jackie Lambie, appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks very much for having me on.